Uh, let's have a big hand for Will and Lael and all the people that have presented this morning. I have, uh, before I talk about something more important, I have a couple of footnotes on what's been said. You know, we've said, read the syllabus. There are probably a few people here that are saying, what's a syllabus? <laughs> I know that because my daughter was an RA. She had one of the girls on her floor come in and say, I'm really concerned about my roommate. She hasn't done any homework yet. You know, it was a week or two into the semester. And so my daughter went to talk to the student and discovered she hadn't read the syllabus. She didn't know there's, you know, actually homework in the syllabus that the professor doesn't necessarily tell you about every day. So read the syllabus. Um, I, I don't feel great about Billy Key being an Alabama fan. <laughs> However, 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 I make allowances because that woman was Miss Alabama. Yeah, yeah. I know, she, she will, uh, she'll deal with me later, I know. And uh, Carrie, I, I appreciate the fact that you, uh, you know, encourage the moms out there. They're not going to have people raiding their refrigerator. Unfortunately, I live right next to campus, so my refrigerator is one of the ones that gets raided uh, by Wheaton College students. Um, I want to talk to you about uh, living well in diversity. Uh, this is the closing part of our morning together. Um, I felt when I came to Wheaton College in 2010 that uh, this subject was of such central importance that it was important for me as the president to address it in our opening uh, orientation. Uh, there are many, many other people on campus that could speak to this subject, uh, perhaps in, in, in some ways more effectively than I can. Um, but I wanted to communicate strongly that this commitment to living well in diversity is an institutional priority uh, right from the top of the institution. And as I've looked at what is happening in the world generally, particularly in American culture over the last eight years, it just seems more important to me uh, every year. Uh, when I see what happened in Charlotte, in Ferguson, in Charlottesville, what's happening in Chicago, kinds of things that happen in Wheaton, Illinois, uh, not just what happens, but how people respond to it. And one of my experiences just living in the church for a long, long time is the more intentional we are about, and this is a commitment that we make at Wheaton College as part of the promise that every member of our community makes in our community covenant, to celebrate ethnic diversity and to, as part of God's design for humanity and to pursue racial reconciliation at one, as one of God's redemptive purposes for us in Jesus Christ. The harder we work on that, sometimes it seems like the harder it is. It's a spiritual struggle. And so I want to talk with you uh, a little bit this morning about why it is important for us to live uh, well in diversity on the campus of, of Wheaton College. It is important biblically. And once I've said that, it's almost as if nothing else uh, needs to be said. But when you uh, turn to the back of your Bible, and this is always good to do. If you haven't read the whole story yet, just peek at the last few pages, see how it ends. Uh, what you read in the book of Revelation is an amazing and ancient and future purpose of the living God to gather all peoples together for worship in Christ. What the scripture describes, oh, what a beautiful picture it is. A great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the lamb, clothed in white, white robes with palm branches in their hands and crying out with a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the lamb. It's the purpose of God for our worship to be centered in Jesus Christ. And just because Christ is at the center for all of us in all of our diversity to be drawn together. What Revelation describes as tribes, peoples, nations, which more literally could be described as the ethnicities. These are the, the people groups, the language groups, the cultures, the ethnic groups of the world. This is God's design. It is something he delights in. Unity through diversity is the trajectory of the kingdom of God. 
And it's my conviction as the president of Wheaton College, it is absolutely the conviction of the trustees of Wheaton College that that future reality ought to shape our present reality. That here at Wheaton College, we would experience this multicultural multitude in greater dimensions as part of our own campus community. It's important biblically. And that is why we could never say what for some of us may sometimes be tempting to say, why, why are we focusing on race when we ought to be focusing on the gospel? Understand, racial reconciliation and Christian unity are necessary implications of the gospel. They are in and of themselves gospel issues. It's important, thank you, thank you. Um, it's important for us biblically, it's also important missionally. You look at the mission statement of Wheaton College, we say we are called to educate the whole person, every dimension of who we are in our humanity. It's been beautifully demonstrated for us in just all the dimensions of care that we're talking about this morning. The whole person to build the church and benefit society worldwide. And I don't know how we can do that if we are only living and working and worshiping and playing and studying with people from our own group. How could we be effective doing kingdom work globally unless we have the skills and the sensitivities to reach across ethnic and cultural barriers? A multicultural international diversity is absolutely in the best interest of your education and your future service to the kingdom of God. And that's why we say in our community covenants, part of the commitment that we make to one another, that we will celebrate ethnic diversity and we will pursue racial reconciliation, understanding that this is part of God's design for humanity what he intended from the beginning, and also it is part of God's redemptive purpose, purposes for us in Christ in the present and into the future. It's important biblically, it's important missionally, it's important historically. I look at 158 years in the history of Wheaton College, and um, I came to this community when I was one year old, so I've been here for about a third of Wheaton's history. I'm, I'm getting close to being a third of Wheaton's history. And I look at that history in terms of ethnicity, in terms of race, in terms of culture, and there are so many things to feel so grateful about, but also many things to lament. All of us carry around with us the historical baggage of racialized societies. Certainly true in the United States, but it's, it's a human issue, so it's a global issue. All the cultures of the world in one way or another are struggling with this. And when things have a historical grounding to them, uh, you can't just say, let's build a better future without reckoning with the past. It's maybe a little bit like this. Um, I am one of the, the least handy people around the house that you can imagine. Um, and so I'm the kind of person that if something needs to be repainted, I, I think, oh, let's just like, let's just start where we are. Let's just paint over it and it'll be fine. And actually what happens when you do that is things quickly start to crumble and degrade. It's just not how that works. You've got to scrape it down to the wood and then you can uh, begin to paint something new. But it's not just a matter of, of painting something over it. it. It's really dealing with the past. And, and we deal with that at, at Wheaton College as we do in American culture. This college absolutely founded on the principle that all people are created free. You got just a little glimpse of it last night. It's, it's worth reading and learning more about. Jonathan Blanchard is an abolitionist uh, committed to the immediate end of slavery in the United States, really at the forefront um, of that fight um, in this country. And uh, the Blanchard family, also just in its family life, uh, very committed to welcoming people of different races. There were um, African Americans living in the Blanchard home, as well as people from uh, other countries um, around the world. It was just part of their part of their family life that became part of our community life as as a campus. And there have been times when when we have really lived up to that vision and that heritage. But there are also many times when we have failed to live up to it. I'm encouraged, uh, particularly when I think back to what it was like to be uh, a student here in the 1980s, to see how this community has become uh, more diverse, as you saw last night in some of the statistics. Um, 
Now, 25 percent of our student body from ethnic minority communities in the United States. In addition to that, 10 percent of our student body coming from third culture, international settings. It's a, it's a growing diversity. I grew up in this community, and this is the way I say it. Um, it's, not, it's not meant to be a humorous comment. It's just the, the truth of my reality. Uh, this community was so white that my only non-white friends were imaginary. Um, I, I did a lot of reading in sports biographies. My lens on racial conditions in the United States was uh, shaped by my reading in African American and Latino uh, authors uh, particularly. But that was a world that wasn't part of my experience. So I look at how that has changed in this community. I, I see the progress. I'm, in, I'm encouraged by it. But I also know that for most of the 20th century, a Wheaton education was deeply impoverished by a lack of diversity on our campus. Our students missed out on the opportunity to grow in multicultural understanding through close, personal relationships on campus that could become lifelong friendships. The reasons for that are complex, aspects of overt prejudice, systemic racism, often sins of omission, a lack of intentionality in building close relationships in the church that would fully reflect the multicultural direction of the kingdom of God. But that's, that's part of, our, that's part of our, our history, and so there are historical reasons why it's important for us to be intentional, focused, thoughtful, prayerful um, about leaning into uh, what it means to be a diverse community in Christ. And for me, these issues are also deeply personal. I won't say as much about that this morning, just given the time that we have. But I will say that um, my wife, Lisa, and I were raising our family in a much more diverse community in Center City, Philadelphia. And part of our commitment in coming to Wheaton, for me coming back to Wheaton, this is a community I grew up in, is uh, believing that this community could become increasingly a reflection of the global body of Christ. And if I didn't believe that that was a possibility, um, I, I would not have come to be uh, president of this school. What I want to do this morning is invite you to make this your personal concern as well, and to recognize students that embracing ethnic diversity will require of you growth in your personal understanding. It's not enough uh, simply to say, I'm not a racist. Okay, you don't want to be a racist. Maybe in one sense of the word, you're not a racist. But you, you have a long way to go, whoever you are, in wrestling with the implications of ethnic difference in the kingdom of God. It can be a growth area for you. I'll, and it, it can be a growth area for all of us. I'm not just speaking to Anglo students. Also speaking to students from minority ethnic backgrounds and to your families. Anytime we're talking about sin issues, they are human issues, and human issues are universal issues. And so there are ways in which Wheaton College in your time here will challenge you to examine some of your own ethnic assumptions, maybe some of your own racial prejudices. There'll be times when you will be called to virtues of patience and forgiveness. When you see students from Wheaton's majority culture that don't really seem to get it, when it comes to relationships and race. You may be tempted to withdraw, to give up, not to lean in to reconciliation, but there is that promise that you too have made to embrace ethnic diversity, to pursue racial reconciliation as part of God's redemptive purposes in Christ. I'm also speaking to third culture students God has a work of grace to do in your life. You have a unique upbringing. It's an amazing resource for multicultural understanding that enriches this college. But, but you'll have to wrestle through some of your own prejudices as well. Here in America, in American culture, there are cultural boundaries that you haven't yet sought to navigate. I, I think, for example, of a Korean background student, grew up in Cambodia, went on an overseas program to Africa and kind of thought, you know, I'm, I came from a majority world. I probably understand African issues. And he really had to confront a lot of his own prejudices in that context. And that was an amazing learning experience, not just for him, but, but also for his American classmates. And of course, I am speaking to my fellow white Anglo-Saxon Protestants 
particularly if you did not grow up in a particularly diverse community. Can I ask you to understand this? That you have many brothers and sisters on this campus who live with the conscious reality of their ethnicity every waking moment on campus. And there are ways in which life at Wheaton will be different for them than it will be for you as a student who is part of our majority culture. Uh, you know, being white is the default position in many ways of American culture. That's not a matter, it's not something to feel guilty about or ashamed of. It is, it is a privilege in our culture. Uh, I think this is a helpful analogy that's worked for me. Um, it's easy not even to notice some of the privileges that you have and difficulties and challenges you do not face if, if your um, racial background is, is Caucasian. It's a little bit like standing on third base in a baseball game and thinking that you hit a triple um, but actually, you started on third base. And so, um, I, even beginning to understand why it's hard for somebody else to get to first base in some cultural settings, you can't think that you already hit a triple and really understand that. Uh, that's an analogy that's, that's helped me in thinking about this. Uh, there are many students on this campus who, um, when they wake up and look in the mirror, go to class, study at the library, eat at the dining commons, go to practice, participate in a musical group. Uh, for you, as a white student, you never even think about your racial identity. It's not something you, it, it, it's just sort of quote unquote normal. But that's not the experience predominantly for students of color and faculty of color and staff of color on this campus. And, and sometimes they get tired of feeling like they have to represent for their ethnicity all the time. It will be hard for them when they experience insensitive or ignorant comments which are particularly disappointing in Christian community. And even beginning to start to understand that is going to take a lot more from you than just saying, I'm, I'm not prejudiced. It's going to require a commitment to reconciling relationships of mutual understanding of, of spiritual growth. Uh, are you willing at the beginning of your time at Wheaton to begin to understand this and to lean into this? Uh, I'm saying that uh, living well in diversity ought to be a personal issue for all of us. And so I invite you to be not apathetic but intentional and uh, to go through the hard conversations, not withdraw from them but lean into them deal with sinful attitudes in our own lives. That's part of what I'm calling us to do. Um, being willing to confront sinful attitudes in the lives of others, but also to be patient with that process, uh, to work through whatever challenges we face at a campus in these areas. Those are all areas where we will need to learn and learn again what it means to be a community of grace, where sins are covered by the cross, where by the work of the Holy Spirit, we are learning to love one another the way that Jesus loves. I, I love the way that one of our trustees spoke about reaching across areas of ethnic difference to work for unity in the body of Christ. He said, our task is to make real what Christ died to achieve. Will you participate in that great task? Uh, thank you for being here this morning. I want to turn things over to Will and Lael for final instructions about what comes next. We're so glad you're here.